Welcome to the seventh episode of the Norwalk Film Festival podcast. I'm Sean Fox, one of the volunteer board members of the festival, and thank you for joining, whether you're listening or watching. This is an interview series to help share the stories of our filmmakers before our festival starts so that you can get to know them a little bit better before seeing their films in person. Today's interview is with two people. We waited this long into the run so they'd be ready for a curveball like this. We were joined by Katie Goodman and Soren Kissel. They're the wife and husband comedy super team behind the film, The Moms. Logline for The Moms is five moms, seven minutes, one Prius, and 432 opinions they will die for. Welcome to Mom's Night Out. I, I don't know why um, my inner world voice felt right for that, but it you got it. So <laughs> there it is. The Moms is part of our fourth annual Norwalk Film Festival. We have two full days of programming for you with screenings at the historic Wall Street Theater, hosting mixers and panels at the Norwalk Public Library, and an opening night party at the 314 Beer Garden in South Norwalk, Friday night the 19th. The Moms is such a fun seven-minute ride. Uh, I hope you can come out and see it on the big screen. I had a great time chatting with Katie and Soren. Uh, we talk about their past comedy work and some of uh, live shows that they've done and then how we got into The Moms. So now, here's my interview with Katie and Soren. We are joined today by the director and writer of The Moms, Katie Goodman and Soren Kissel. Thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, we're excited. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's it's such a fun uh, film about these moms who are having their one night out and, and oh, I guess, the end of the night out. Um, but before we jump into that, can you tell us a little bit about your background? You're from a sketch comedy background. Um, so can you tell us a little bit of your past work? And uh, I was also really intrigued by the broad comedy tour and the fundraising you guys had done for that. So touch base on a little bit of that. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, we, you know, we started out as actors and playwrights and we had our own theater company for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then broad comedy has been around for about 25 years and it's a troupe of about on any given uh, year, uh, four to six women. And we, and Soren and I both write it. We both direct it. I'm in it. Um, and yeah, we've been writing political satire, um, feminist satire, both musical, big musical numbers and cutting <laughs> things on pianos and sketches. You know, people have sort of described it as a cross between um, Saturday Night Live, you know, and the vagina monologues or something. <laughs> and, um, and of course, it's changed a lot over time, and you know, yeah. politics have changed. Um, and we tour, yeah, we tour. We've done everything from like, you know, just uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival to, um, uh, you know, actual regional theaters, colleges. But our favorite thing that played off Broadway, yeah, twice now. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yep, <laughs> off Broadway run. And our favorite thing to do is these fundraising events where we go in for a, you know, a progressive nonprofit and either in a theater or in a conference center. And we do a show and do like a funny paddle raiser in the middle to try to raise money for them. And we've raised um, over $2 million so far in the last 10 years doing wow. that for causes. And so uh, with a small pause in the middle for COVID, of course, because... <laughs> Gathering with people in a room, laughing out loud. Uh, yeah, not not really the best. That's thing actually that. kind of when we started uh, focusing on these films. We've always done videos, and we have 120 mm -hmm. videos on YouTube on the Broad Comedy Channel. Um, Spoof and music videos. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, some are like really highly produced, and some are on stage. And, um, but then we decided to turn a couple of them into like actual film films that we would, sure. you know, put into festivals. And we've done a couple before um, COVID, but during COVID, we we're like, well, this works. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you guys approach something differently if you're writing a sketch versus in a short film form? Is there a different approach or kind of just, you know, how are you telling the story differently? So, since, since the pandemic, um, this is our second film. I don't know, the moms. The first one's called the Karens, and it's a support group for women named Karen. Uh, and in what it was a sketch that we'd written, uh, ju yeah, just after the pandemic, during Omicron, literally, in fact, because I remember where it first premiered. Uh, and um, uh, it was a sketch that we looked at and kind of said, "Hey, you know, this this could 
translate really quite directly into into being a film. Uh, and so and so with that one, um, we just we just went straight for it. It's a, yeah, the Karens was already written like a group in a room, and so we didn't change a single word. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and we got asked a lot at festivals for that one. Okay, so how did you convert a sketch into this film? We kind of went actually the sketch piece, uh, um, but it just it, it it translated itself um, well. Uh, but then this this new one, the moms, um, we 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 intentionally made more cinematic. Uh, in fact, our um, our our DP. Um, okay, so during the Karens, we it was filmed in a like a it was in Brooklyn here in Brooklyn. We that's where we are. Uh, it was filmed in a church kind of community room um, mm-hmm. in a beautiful old church building, and that room had windows all the way around it. Uh, and we shot it all in one day, um, so it was like eight hours of shooting or something like that. But what that meant was, uh, through the windows and various stained glass windows, and the hours passing, the light changed and changed and changed and changed, <laughs> shot after shot after shot. Uh, and the the color correction afterward was just miserable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hours of color correcting. Uh, and uh, we were talking to uh, Sam, our director of photography, afterwards. Um, you know, kind of good naturedly complaining about the amount of color correcting that had to happen and he uh he said okay well for this next one here's a challenge write me something that we could shoot in a parked car in a parking lot at night (laughs) Uh, and that'll solve all the lighting problems uh and that kind of sparked our our interest a little bit and we had we had an idea um for a piece that we'd written it was it was written for moms sitting on a park bench years ago, mm-hmm. though it didn't escalate at all in the same way that that the film does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just more of kind of a friendly conversation, uh, and we thought, hey, we could put that in a car. But in thinking about you know things you see in a parked car at night, that's where the um, that's where the kind of spoof noir violence of the piece comes in because um, it just it kind of felt like it was the right setting to 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 jack things up. Uh, so that's where the I don't know how much you want to say about it, but that's where (laughs) that's when things escalate toward the end of the film. Yeah, that's where that that's well, you have to come to Norwalk uh, to see how it ends. (laughs) So kind of oddly, I mean, not oddly, but um, not surprisingly, there are it has its own problems shooting in a car. Yeah. Uh, Oh, my God. (laughs) That was my next question. So, I mean, Sam Enriquez is amazing. He's a total. uh, He's our cinematographer, and he did both of our films. So he he can make kind of anything work, and so he got us um, onto uh, uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yards, and so we drove around. He and I drove around a lot, like a week before, trying to find a quiet, secluded spot, which in Brooklyn is totally non-existent, even in this really remote. And so we found this one street and it was perfect. We started shooting. It's a night shoot. So we started at 10 and we went, Ooh. we wrapped at four, which is. Well, hey, no sunlight problems. Oh my God. No sunlight. Yeah. Lots of caffeine problems. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So the only thing was, you know, we'd be sitting there and all of a sudden starting at like 11 and then 12 and then one and two, all of the um, film trucks that live there. <laughs> start coming home from other shoots like it's incredibly loud and buses that's on a bus route like who knew that it's like completely in the middle of nowhere yeah somehow the 10 minutes when we were scouting and somehow the 10 minutes that we stood there went this is completely silent (laughs) perfect and there's not a car in sight must have been the only 10 minutes you know of the night with nobody there yeah that's how it goes the amount of the amount of okay hold for car there was a lot of hold okay hold for bus (laughs) Um, as you wrote in the description for the film, the moms is about parents and the period of time in which we shouldn't be allowed to communicate with others. Um, I currently have an almost three year old and am dealing with exactly what happens in this movie. Like within the last week, we've had this conversation about about what happens. What to call it. Yeah, what to call it. Um, so I guess uh, is this something that comes from real life and uh, you know, is that how you base a lot of your writing, like experiences that you've had? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've been, yeah, uh, you know, it's 
we <laughs> whenever we go out to dinner with friends, there's always like a, a cocktail napkin that gets written on. And we're just like, sorry, excuse me. I mean, now we write notes on our phone, but it's always been, you know, something comes up when we're with people or reading something or experiencing it. Yeah. I, we also have done um, in Brooklyn, we've done a series called um, Shit Park Slope Parents Say, and it's a video series. And what's funny is we wrote this like 14 years ago about all that kind of parenting stuff. And then <laughs> after the moms came out, we were like, maybe we should re-release this stuff because obviously it's still like hitting a nerve with people and we put it back up and it got a million views and oh my god but we're all right like thousands of comments about how yeah every, all these parents are still as crazy as they've ever been <laughs> as much things change they say the same exactly yeah <laughs> this uh this specific one uh was years ago the seed of it was some family members having the literal uh, cousins of Katie's having the literal conversation uh, that's that they, you know, that's depicted there in the first half of the film. Uh, and the second half came from our experience. And I wonder if, if you've seen this also where we're married and, and been parents, uh, we have a kid. And uh, when, when our kid was say three o'clock, three o'clock, three years old, which was <laughs> like 17 years ago, uh, uh, the big discussion among parents then was how to sleep train your your baby. Uh, I think you said three o'clock because like that's when we that's were when we're right. <laughs> uh, uh, and and they and they talk about this. The, our characters talk about this in the film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, once you've uh, once you've either decided, okay, we're going with. At the time, it was called attachment parenting. I'm I'm yeah. out of touch with what it's called now. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it has has some new cuddling your baby cool name, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're doing that, and so you're awake for night after night after night after night, uh, or if you are doing um, whatever nowadays they call uh, letting the baby cry itself to sleep uh, themselves, neglect, to sleep. <laughs> uh, depending on which park slope. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, you become very attached to that, and all of a sudden you become like an evangelist for it. You know, mm -hmm. and it because so all of a sudden means a lot to you. Like all my friends need to agree with me about this, uh, and if they don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them that they're doing it wrong. Right. Uh, and we kind of, it's you don't experience that a lot in the. I mean, you know, where people are pol politically opinionated and stuff like that. But as far as like lifestyle choices mm -hmm. of, um, uh, I used. I don't know. I use salt with iodine in it, and you <laughs> should too. You're doing it wrong if you don't. Uh, you know, you don't you don't run into that a lot. So we were amazed just with the how specific that is to parenting. It really is, especially in this that like two to. I mean, you know, maybe a little bit, but I feel like when you get to the two to five is when you're really interacting with a lot of other parents too. So that's when you start getting those like headbutting moments where you're like, oh. You let your kid wear a coat in the car seat? What are you doing? <laughs> right. We're also insecure anyway. Like, we really have no freaking idea. What oh, we're yeah. Doing. And, like, we don't know if any of this works. There's no guidebook. We don't. <laughs> right. And there's probably not a wrong answer. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Within a certain parameters. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the group of women who are in this film, um, you've been working with for a long time. Eight years, yeah. Eight years. But I've the troop sort of changes over, you know, mm -hmm. uh, over time. When you're writing something like this for a group of people that you've been working with for a long time, how does that change your process in the writing, if at all? Like, you know, you know how to write for certain people, or do you just let the ideas come and then? I don't really know how to write for certain people now. Uh, but what I was, <laughs> the reason I even said that we had this troop before is because we, when we did this, this was like 20 years ago, and I was 35 and had a, <laughs> you know, brand new baby. And now when we had to rewrite it, um, I'm so much older, like the cast, we keep hiring young people and I keep, <laughs> and so there's a line in, in it where, you know, I say, um, I don't know how you mo young moms handle this. You know, I just worry, um, these days I worry about if my daughter's going to get pregnant or become a poetry major. And it's like the, <laughs> the whole, so we've had to like, ch obviously change for, I can't really have an infant <laughs> or yeah. really anymore um but yeah no we absolutely have always um 
written with in mind who's in it. And this core troupe has been together eight years. They're solid. They just are wonderful actresses. I think they're they're so funny. And we we know it's not like we know what they can and can't do because I kind of think they can do anything. But mm-hmm. we we know like oh god, give her that line. She's right. gonna you know nail that. Yeah. And for our touring stuff, uh, most of the pieces are two to four women in them. Yeah. Um, so the the design being that we you know when we have a gig if one of the actresses can't make it or in the modern world if one of the actresses is has sick, covid yeah <laughs> uh, that that they can you know cover each other and it's it's actually hard to find any of the main sketches that we do with our touring show in which most of the actresses haven't played most of the characters mm-hmm. at one point or another um uh so they're all wonderful in that way but yeah when we're writing a new piece we definitely picture in our head uh Okay, so this is going to be the lead, and you know, just it adds, um, just adds a little meat to the ideas happening. Yeah, all the picture specific has that clarity when you're going from like just the general idea of putting it into the different characters. Yeah, it's funny it's, too though because we do keep sort of finding new things that we didn't really know they were going to nail. Like um, Molly, there's two redheads, but she's the one in the middle seat who's very uptight and is like very uncomfortable with calling. Uh, private parts of children anything she <laughs> calls it their place uh, yes <laughs> as opposed to arguing for you know pp or wee wee and um she like has never played that kind of part before she's like our outgoing outrageous crazy actress and um that's what we always give her so this was like really fun and i really love being able to sort of play with it and try that yeah watching her be more internal yeah yeah that's good so when you guys are writing something together, how do you, is one of you come and say, hey, I got an idea or what's the general process from germ of an idea to, to paper? Yeah, typically uh, we will, like once a season, we'll sit down, we often go out for coffee with a list of everything we've written on napkins and in our phones mm-hmm. um, and kind of just discuss all those and okay, who wants to take a first shot at pee pee wee wee say, <laughs> uh, and and then typically one of us will just make a first kind of run at it uh, and turn it over to the other person, either with a, hey, I'm really having fun with this. Um, uh, can you give me some notes first <laughs> and let me keep working on it? And then do you take over and do the next draft? Or like, oh, okay, I did all I could. It's still, it's not it's not quite well I like yet, but yeah. your turn. Or sometimes like, <laughs> what do I do? Hey, I, like, I don't know what the hell this is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we write music, it's a little different though because I, I write the music. And so sometimes, um, almost never do I write music before we have some words or ideas because um, that would be more like, I don't know, that the the words are so the whole point <laughs> um, if you're doing satire and comedy. So we have to have like a sense of what it is. But sometimes Soren will like um, write a whole country song spoof to another song or something, okay. or just to something in his head, and then he'll hand it to me, and he's like, it goes like this, ding, 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 ding. Oh my God, <laughs> just give me the words, you know? And so there's been like a million different versions of how we do that. Yeah, or often I'll just try to write kind of like, you know, poetry that scans yeah. really rhythmically, um, mm-hmm. and and then hand it over for the, the melody to arrive. <laughs> uh, when we started writing together, we've been working together since we met. We met in a play in college. Um, no. But when we started formally writing together, uh, we were running a black box theater and, and broad comedy was, comedy was one of our projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it kind of started to gather enough attention that we just followed it where it led. Uh, but previous to that, we'd written pieces that we like, we'd write a play, uh, but separately one of us would write it. And so when we first headed into writing broad comedy together, uh, we would kind of have a feeling of ownership of like, well, no, this, this park bench mom's piece is Soren wrote this one and Katie wrote this song uh, and we might give each other notes or something like that. And then there was some point where it really sunk in like, Oh, you know what? Um, as much as my ego wants me to be able to do it all by myself, this, this piece ends up better if Katie has also worked on it, <laughs> you know, yeah. or vice versa. Uh, yeah. so that was a, that was an eye opener a couple of years in of, um, uh, kind of giving up the idea of ownership. Oh. Yeah, I think filmmaking and the arts in general, it's like you really have to learn to rely on other people to 
help you make something great. You know, if you're trying to be the DP and the gaffer and the director and the actor uh, and all the stuff, it's too much. Oh, so much. I mean, especially as as a theater, when I've been just a director for theater, it's very lonely. You're like out <laughs> there and you're not going to really turn to your stage manager and be like, what do you think? I mean, you're, nobody does that. I guess you could, but nobody does that. Right. Culturally in theater. And when I started making film and studying film, um, again, I was, uh, you know, everything I was reading about your DP or cinematographer is that, you know, that's your partner. You run everything by them. And I was like, I've been waiting my whole life to have another director. <laughs> and I mean, we've done that, but especially when I'm doing something by myself. And so in directing this, uh, these two films, I was just like, okay, Sam, you know, many coffees, many texts in the middle of the night, like, oh, I have an idea. Can we do this? Can we shoot through this window? You know, and or I've and I don't know, I still don't know a massive amount about lighting. And um he's so great at that. So it's he I remember I just got hired to um direct uh, my first feature and um, you know, basically and I'm uh, I'm doing all kinds of things to prep for that, but one of the things he said is it's everything you're already doing, and not just from the small films, but from film and theater, because it's a comedy, it's two it's two women are the main characters. He's like, everything they're hiring you for is not the lighting. Right. Right. <laughs> well, right. They're hiring you to get the funny out of these actors. <laughs> they're hiring you to, you know, figure out what's the best way to tell the story and also for your eye on the editing and how to make it snappy and how to. And um, that was really interesting. I sort of hadn't realized I have 35 years of, you know, working with actors in a script. Yeah. And, um, that and it's very like easy and natural and i you know i i think that's i anyway, that is something i would say to people who are <laughs> kind of making a, a transition yeah. Yeah. yeah right you don't have film director on your resume a ton you know you don't have 35 years of film directing but you have all of those skills and everything you've been doing and actually the thing that we do have which is weird is with these like like we have a music video called baby you're 40 and it's <laughs> And Soren's where isn't it worth watching for him? Uh, and, and it's like a rap. But the thing is, um, it's and and there's a bunch of them that we have. We have another one called um, I Ain't Funding That Shit, and it's we shot it in D.C. But we kept shooting. You know, with a music video, you often shoot the entire thing in one location, move, shoot it in an entire yeah. other location. So you actually do not have to plan the shots. <laughs> You get home and deal with it, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay, I have 1,000 hours of footage now. Yeah. Edit it all into pieces. And um, that's kind of great, but that did not prepare me, you yeah. know, in a way. Yeah. yeah. So now, then I was like, okay, yeah, 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 we're going to go. No. <laughs> uh, where, where are we going to seat Sam? And also, you'll see in the moms, okay, a couple inside funny things, but. And the moms, um, the first little bit is actually driving. And so there's only me and Sam are in the back of the car with the camera. He, I can't remember where he was sitting. And it's just the drivers talking. And then um, we shoot a couple other people. But not everyone's in the car, obviously, because we can't yeah. with the crew. And our poor sound guy, uh, the lovely John Stegall, he's in the trunk. No. <laughs> I mean, it's a hatchback. So yeah. it's not like anything. But he's, um, he, you know, he's in there with, um, and he's a sort of a, a lovely, um, small man. And so he, uh, short ish. And so he totally was like, this is the most comfortable shoot I've ever had in my life. He wasn't like holding anything. And we're yeah, like, we kept, we kept apologizing to him or, you know, kind of thanking him for being game. <laughs> yeah. No, I love this. Yeah. I'm just laying your lap. <laughs> so cute. Just to get to cruise and listen. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, you know, kind of wrapping this up, I mean, it's a big general question, but I think writing comedy is the most difficult thing to do uh, because it can be so dependent on the audience and like the edit, I don't know, there's just so much, it, it's, I don't know, this is a very biased opinion, but to get like a sad emotion out of somebody, it's a little bit easier than to get a laugh out of somebody. So what do you think makes good comedy successful? Interesting question. Yeah, that's a kind of... Uh, um, I think there's... I mean, I think there's a lot of different 
answers to that question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why there are so many different types of comedians who are successful with so many different voices, you know? Um, for us, uh, what we enjoy um, and what we tend toward, I think, is uh, we take something we take something realistic and try to make it and try to just kind of elevate it into a ridiculous place. Um, so we're we're big believers in like the the um, playing for playing for truth in the in the in the the heart of the comedy being real honesty in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just the it's the outside of it that's the ridiculous situation that these sort of real people mm -hmm. on a way that. And I think in in these films in particular, that's what uh, that's what we've leaned into with the with the Karens one. Um, they are they're very ordinary people who happen to be named Karen. <laughs> uh, uh, in the support group together, um, and a lot of it's—I mean, it's—it's—it's it's, it's ridiculous and funny, but a lot of it's just very honest and, and realistic acting. Uh, and then, and then with the moms, um, elevating it to the places it goes within the yeah, course yeah. of of the short film. Uh, same thing, like trying to start from a place of a real honest discussion and have just spin into ridiculous land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so starting in that truth. And then just finding the trying to keep the heart of it, yeah. trying to keep that truth central mm -hmm. to it, yeah. Uh, with while letting it wander off into <laughs> while letting it be as ridiculous as possible. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, so, lastly, I just uh, I mean, you kind of alluded to your you're up and hired to direct a feature, but what other projects do you guys have coming up? Oh, we're on. Thanks. Yeah, we uh, we broad comedy, the the troupe itself. We played off Broadway at the Soho Playhouse this fall, uh, and that was fabulous. And now mm -hmm. trying to kind of refocus back into uh, the regional touring and primarily fundraiser type stuff. Um, uh, so swinging back in that direction, I'm I'm working on a novel. Also, um, and uh, we have a children's book out, and then I have uh, I have another one, and now I have a third children's book coming out in the fall. Oh, wow. Or sorry, in the spring. Uh, uh, so a lot of a lot of projects rolling around there, and then yeah, and Katie with this upcoming film. I said, also, um, we're we're batting around we're batting around other ideas of um, what to shoot next. And I, we wrote with a friend of ours, we wrote a TV pilot that we absolutely love. And, um, but what we kind of feel like now, we've always, always, always taken things into our own hands. And we're not very good at like weaving around for somebody to pick us. So I kind of was like, so why are we doing that with this? So um, I'm taking the winter to turn it into a feature and then we're going to shoot it next year. Oh, that's... <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I, I'm not as interested in like selling something and having a huge smash hit whatever TV show. I'm much more interested in making stuff. And I don't want to wait 10 years. For that. <laughs> right. So I've, um, uh, yeah. And I also it's, it's so it, it's about midlife and it's a comedy. It's about three couples and um, and just disaster after dis really funny, funny stuff. <laughs> and um, what you know, one's empty nesting, which we are doing right now. So anything that we're doing that's kind of related to kind of what we're going through is almost always better. I feel like you know the material. So kind of looking for some projects, but you know, also just open to. Um, I really want to work with um, new people. I'm excited to like. I, we keep meeting people at film festivals and stuff, and so I just want to—I want to have new people out there to to work with and try some things we've never done before. And that's something actually that's been great about the the film festival circuit um, is not only do you folks put together—I mean, it's a it's a great place to you know meet producers and kind of and kind of network. But what we didn't quite expect. Um, and has been even more prominent is just meeting other filmmakers uh, and, you know, sharing, sharing ideas and sharing enthusiasms and inspirations. And war stories. And war stories. <laughs> oh, yes. Plenty of war stories. And that's been, that's been terrific. That's been really fun. Yeah. The community. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I think, and having in my couple of years working with the film festival has been the best part is just meeting other people who are like-minded and excited about the projects that they're working on. Uh, 
not to say nobody's excited about Mission Impossible 9 or whatever, but like the people who are making their own things and creating their own stories um, most of the time on their own dime uh, is just, it's great meeting with the, those people and getting to network and help them grow. Well, uh, Katie and Soren, thank you so much for joining me today. It was really a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for thank you for having the moms. Yeah, we're very excited to screen the moms at the Wall Street Theater as part of the Norwalk Film Festival, January twentieth and twenty first. And thanks again. All right, thank you. Thanks again to Katie and Soren for joining me. The moms plus sixty other films are part of a great lineup at our festival this year. Come on down to the Wall Street Theater January 20th and 21st to see it, along with all of our other films, and come out to the 314 Beer Garden on Friday night the 19th for our kickoff party. Make sure to follow Katie Soren and Broad Comedy to stay up to date on their upcoming projects and future live shows. Visit our website, norwalkfilmfestival.org, for ticketing info, schedules, and more. And as always, I want to remind you that we are an entirely volunteer-run organization, and we couldn't do it without you. To help us spreading the word, by following us on all of our social media platforms at the handle at Norwalk Film Festival. There you'll get all the up-to-date details on everything happening with the festival. Uh, as I've said before, our festival is completely based off of ticket sales from the pre- previous year. So the ticket sales help us keep going and helping doing what we love and bringing these films to the community. So thanks for listening and look forward to seeing you in Norwalk. Norwalk.